Hello, I'm Michael Grafnitter from Secure and I'd like to show you how to pass the PRT attack works. This attack is conceptually similar to the well-known pass the ticket attack, but it abuses primary refresh tokens instead of Kerberos tickets. As a reminder, a primary refresh token is a JSON web token that is used for authentication against Azure Active Directory on cloud joint and on hybrid joint devices. It is valid for 14 days and it is cached by the local security authority subsystem service, which optionally encrypts its session key using a TPM chip. The PRT can be used to digitally sign a cookie, which is then used for browser-based authentication against the Azure AD. This authentication mechanism can thus be attacked in two ways either by stealing the PRT itself from the computer's memory, or by stealing a cookie that is digitally signed by the PRT's session key. In both cases, the attacker then uses the stolen secret to authenticate against Azure AD from his own computer. So let's start with the first attack type. I am logged onto a Windows 10 computer that has the Credential Guard feature enabled. A trusted platform module, or a TPM 2.0 chip, is also present on my computer. I am logged in using an Azure Active Directory account, and that is the identity which I'd like to steal. Let's also run the dsreg cmd command, which will show us some advanced information about user and device authentication. We can see that the computer is joined to Azure Active Directory and the computer is not joined to any on-premises Active Directory domain. We can also see that the session key is protected by the TPM chip, which will complicate the attack a little. We will later use this identifier of the Azure Active Directory tenant. The local cache indeed contains a primary refresh token and we can see that its validity is really 14 days. So that is our test environment. Now let's finally create a memory dump of the LSAS process. An attacker would then copy this file onto his own computer and analyze it. We will use Mimikatz for this purpose. So let's start by loading the memory dump file. We are mainly interested in the data that is cached by the cloud authentication package. I was fast, so let's scroll up a little. We see one local interactive session of user Michael. And this is what we are actually interested in the primary refresh token belonging to this user account. Let's copy its contents into a more suitable tool, like the Visual Studio Code. The token contains multiple claims about the owner, including his personal information. But this is the part we are mostly interested in, the token itself and the proof of possession key. So let's now use the stolen PRT to generate a PRT cookie. We are going to use Mimikatz again. We need to use the dpapi cloud apkd command, which means cloud authentication package key derivation. And we will use it to first analyze the proof of possession key. And we got an error saying that the proof of possession key is encrypted using Data Protection API. Luckily, the corresponding master key can also be retrieved by Mimikatz from the memory dump. And yes, Mimikatz's cache now contains the master key we need. So let's try to analyze the proof of possession key again. And we see yet another error. The key is apparently also encrypted using the TPM chip of the source computer, 
which complicates things a little. We does need to execute the following commands with administrative permissions back on the victim's computer. After elevating to the system account, we can ask the TPM chip to derive a key from the proof of possession key. As already said, this step only needs to be performed if the victim's device had a TPM chip. As a final step, we will use the derived key, together with the primary refresh token, to digitally sign a new PRT cookie. And this is the resulting cookie, as generated by Mimikatz. So that was a pretty complex way of generating PRT cookies. Now let's try a different approach, which is quite simple actually. We will create a simple JSON document, which contains the request to get a PRT cookie. We will then use a PowerShell script to send this request to the browser core EXE, a built-in command line utility in Windows. And we can already see the response, which contains an XMS refresh token credential cookie, which is digitally signed by a PRT of the currently logged on user. An attacker could now copy the cookie to his own computer. Now that we have the PRT cookie, we can actually use it for something meaningful. I will try to access the Azure portal. You can see that I am not yet authenticated, so let's change that. I will open the developer tools, which will allow me to edit cookies for this website. I will delete all cookies for login.microsoftonline.com and we can now configure a new cookie called XMS Refresh Token Credential. So let's paste in the cookie name and also the cookie value. We will also configure the cookie to be HTTP only. And that's it. So I can now freely close the developer tools and refresh the website. And we can see the difference right away. I am logged into the Azure portal using the stolen identity. If the user was a global administrator, I can open Azure Active Directory Management and perform any modifications in Azure Active Directory. We can also use PowerShell to connect to Azure Active Directory in this attack, but we will first need to fetch a Graph API access token using the Road Recon tool. Let's paste in the primary fresh token cookie, and we are now authenticated. Let's display the Azure Active Directory Graph API access token, which is in the JSON format. We will use a built-in Python library for this. So this is the access token itself. We see that it is valid for one hour and it really is a token for the Azure AD Graph API. We also see some personal information contained in the token and we will use the IDs later. Let's switch to PowerShell and we will use the built-in Azure AD PowerShell module to connect to Azure Active Directory. Let's paste the tenant ID. Then the account ID of the user we are going to authenticate as. And finally, we need to copy and paste the access token itself.
and we are authenticated. We can now use any other commandlet from the Azure AD PowerShell module, like the Get Azure AD User, to fetch all users from Azure AD. So that was the Pasta PRT attack. During the demos, I have used tools created by Dirkian Molema and Benjamin Delpy, who have also performed extensive research on this topic. You should definitely check out their Twitter accounts if you are interested in Azure AD security. Have a nice day and stay secure.